The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to the crowds, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then, in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who, on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, people drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? They said to him, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of the house who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A pearl of great value. A pearl indeed of such great value. But the question is, isn't that a wonderful phrase? A beautiful expression. But the challenge is, what does it mean for you and for me? Because in naming and in choosing a pearl of great price, we are actually determining the way we should live and the choices we need to make. So if you and I were to be asked, what for us is the pearl of great price? I wonder how we would really respond. In the first reading, God asked this young King Solomon, just taking control, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon knows the great responsibility and so he asks of God an understanding heart to distinguish right from wrong so that he might govern the people properly. He, need, he knew that he needed something to bring peace to his kingdom, justice to his people, and concern for those entrusted to him. He knew that he needed those gifts that would enable him to become what is known as the wise man Solomon. Or as I teasingly say, if he was without it, he would be otherwise not wise. Imagine getting an invitation from God, just as Solomon received. As God says to you and to me, ask something of me and I will give it to you. What an opportunity. Who wouldn't accept such an offer from God? But it makes us wonder what we might really ask. There's so much to ask for. Where do I begin? What do I choose? I wonder what it would be or whom it would be. What is your heart's desire? Who or what is something that is so much, so very important to us? In other words, how would we respond to this invitation from God? And so we need, therefore need to look at the parables we have in the gospel. The gospel presents three parables which speak about the kingdom or the rule of God. Now, the kingdom is something so wonderful and so vast that not just one story or three parables are enough to explain what it is all about. The kingdom is not just a geographical territory, but something that is meant to embrace our hearts. It means we want to see life not just as it is, but how it should be through the eyes and through the heart of God. 
So the three parables really illustrate for us the opportunity as well as the challenge of being a disciple of Jesus. The first and the second parable speak of total commitment and dedication which is called of everyone who follows Jesus in the way of the kingdom. What the parables really teach us is that when one discovers Jesus and what he really means for our life, everything else becomes relative. Everything else becomes secondary. That is what Paul meant, especially in the Philippians chapter 3 verse 8. I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Or again, as he said in Philippians 2.21, For me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. To have a personal relationship with Jesus is to make the life of Jesus our own, so that we want to begin to see with the eyes of Jesus, to hear with the ears of Jesus, and to experience life through the heart of Jesus. Now, instead of the pearl of great value, we might find ourselves chasing other false treasures that mean so much in society today, that things that come and go but do not last, things like privilege or status or pleasure, which mean much to some people who go chasing all their lives for it, but end of it will feel empty and bored. Hence, like Solomon, we need a discerning heart to choose what is really of value and importantly, seek God who is the source of it all. As we have the beautiful text in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Seek first the kingdom of heaven and the rest will fall in line. And that's what precisely happened to Solomon. He asked for this discerning heart, the wisdom, and he got so much more besides. Because the it is more important, more than just the gifts, but to go to the giver, God himself. In the second reading, the letter to the Romans that we heard today, Paul teaches that wisdom is essential because it comes through God's grace. And then he gives us those beautiful words. For those who love God, everything works together for good. These are powerful words for some who believe that no matter what, God is at the heart of the process, God is at the heart of life. For those who love God, everything works together for good. You begin to realize in the struggles and the journeys of life, God is not standing against us, but in the truth and the goodness of life, God stands with us even as we journey through the challenges and struggles of life. But it's not important only to seek the pearl of great value. The man in the parable went out and sold everything he had just to purchase it. So it's important that in embracing the pearl of great price, there are things that we need to give up and to let go. Because whatever is a barrier or an obstacle must be given away, given up, so that we may fully experience the pearl of great value. Look at every life-influencing choice that we make. It has great significance, but it has great implications as well. Every yes also has a corresponding no. Every decision implies a renunciation. If I marry one person, I cannot marry someone else. If I live in one place, I cannot live elsewhere. If I choose a certain career, that excludes many careers. If I have this, then I cannot have that. Every yes also means a no to something else. Every choice also means a renunciation of something else. But we must be careful. If the focus is on what we have given up instead of what we have embraced, then our life is going to be a mess. It will be a half-hearted response as we seek distractions, escape routes, compensations to make up for what I have given up. We will give in 
to lingering longings and longing lingerings. What is for us the pearl of great value? For what are we willing to renounce other things? How central is God in our lives? To embrace God and to be embraced by God means that we must give away, empty all that comes as a burden and as an obstacle. It could be the resentment and the bitterness within that consumes us. It could be the envy and the jealousy that rules us. It could be the revenge and hatred we have towards someone who has wronged us and we are obsessed by that or by that person. We need to have the humility and the courage to name what we need to let go, to be emptied from all this which is our obstacles in our life. The key phrase in the gospel which motivates the letting go of all is joy. We have it in Matthew 13 verse 44. For without joy, this man would not have been motivated to sell everything for the field and for its treasure. Without joy, Christian life becomes an obligation not worth living for or not even dying for. So what must be highlighted particularly in the first two parables is that neither one regrets for a second what he had to give up, but instead acts out of this great joy that what he has discovered will now impact his life. Each character is so fueled by this joy of what he has discovered and not focused on what he has given up. Only in this kind of a context it is possible that we are experiencing the tender importance and the love of God. If the pain of what we sacrifice overshadows the joy that we have received, if the focus is more on what we have given up rather than what we have embraced, we might end up doing the right thing but with the wrong energy. And we will be a sad and a sorry Christian for that. Our faith and our religion will become a burden and boring instead of a delight and a joy. More than we possessing God who is the pearl of great value, it is the pearl God himself who embraces and possesses us. And when that happens, we will be God's instruments of grace and joy with infectious happiness and a contagious joy. That's what the challenge of the parable particularly we see. A pearl of great value. What a wonderful phrase. What a beautiful expression. But again, we ask ourselves, what does it mean for you and for me? How immediate and how central is God to me? How personal is my relationship with Jesus? Is God someone whom I occasionally turn to when I'm in need with a prayer? Someone whom I have a periodic mass on a Sunday? Or is this God someone so personal to me that I joyfully discover what it means to be loved by this God and I'm assured of his presence in the struggles of my life? And like the pearl of great value, I'm willing to bet my whole life, to stake my whole life on this God who for me is the pearl of great price. We pray that we will experience this God so personally and so deeply that as a result of it, we will feel it in our bones, that it will be something that grips our heart and it is something that is grasped by our spirit. In naming and choosing God as this pearl of great price. We are determining the way we should live and the choices we need to make. If you and I were to be asked, what is the pearl of great price? More than just saying it with our lips, may we live it with our hearts so that people will see in you and me that we have truly found the pearl of great price. Or more correct, correctly, allowed God to find us. So may it be in your life and in mine.